guys, how's it going? It's uh, Brian here. We're just, uh, today we're gonna be talking about CVs. I know that uh, there's gonna be people out there that were like me who uh, really wanted to get into DCC and had, uh, had no idea where to go with it. Um, no idea how to start. And you know, when you go to train shows and things like that, you get the people that are explaining things to you and it's like, you know, overwhelming information that's like zoom, right? Like right through your brain because it's just, they know what they're talking about and they really confuse you and they make it sound more complicated than it really is. Um, I have the Zephyr, I have the Zephyr Extra. Um, and in my last video, I showed you how to quickly hook it up just to be able to use your trains. But I did uh, briefly say something about me. I had to change some CVs on my train. So what I want to do today is I want to show you the Zephyr. Uh, I have a train on the track right now. Um, I'm on my floor. Again, I suggest don't put in your track and everything on the floor. I am going to be getting something a little better than this, but uh, just for today, I'm going to be showing you how to do it on the floor. But I'm going to be talking about the uh, CVs and how to change it on the Zephyr. Uh, I'll briefly just go over. Uh, CV stands for configuration variables. Uh, basically what it is, is each CV has its own number and that particular number controls a certain thing in the decoder. And you're able to change it to make your train how you want it to run, to go with your needs and everything like that. Um, the train I bought was an after an RTR and it uh, didn't run that great when I first got it. And I was actually really confused, didn't know why, because again, I was brand new and didn't understand CVs. Um, I played with the CVs and everything, had some help from Paul and a few other people will, thank you very much. Um, and they got it to go, so mine's running pretty good. So let me just grab you here. Okay, so there it is, I got it turned on. I don't have any power going to the track right now, but uh, it's, you can just see the pin pad there. There's my train, plugged in. The wires, just how I said they were, going to my program track. Okay, so the first thing I did when I got my train was I knew how to change the address. That's pretty self-explanatory. All you do is push program mode, and then you push your loco, and you can uh, hit it again for whether or not you want a two-digit address or a four-digit address. Enter your number that you're gonna be putting it in for your address, and hit CV right. Your train's done, now it's got that address. Um, to be doing CVs, you, uh, you would hit program, and you hit CV, and then choose the CV that you want to mess with or change, whether it's like two or anything, push two, you push CV again, you enter the uh, range you want to put it in, because each CV has its own range, you put that in, you hit write, CV, WR for write, and you're good to go. Um, so, just to let you know, when you push program, there's DIR, OPS, page, and uh, physical. I, I, I haven't messed with page or physical yet. I've only messed with direct and ops, which is uh, operations. Basically, operations means you can do the changes while it's on your main track. But you got to remember when you do that, the one that you're going to be changing, you have to have that loco only on that track. Um, if you have a big setup or something like that and you've got a bunch of trains on the track, you stick with your direct and you just use the programming track. Very simple, put it on there and uh, you're good to go with whatever you're doing. So, we got my train here today. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what uh, some things I did to it. Um, CV03 and CV04 are two that you should kind of learn and mess around with because what that is is your acceleration rate and your deceleration rate. Three being acceleration, four being deceleration. And that just kind of makes it a little real. Now I don't have sound in this, but when you do have sound, it really makes it prototypical and looks pretty real, like it, it takes its time uh, speeding up. So let me just show you how I got mine set up. I'll just put the train there, get some power to it and loco 6125 and then loco again so now that train selected and there we go and so i have my uh cv03 and cv04 i haven't set the 10 right now so if i just turn it up here 
You can see it, it's, it's powered up now and it's gonna just start taking its time to move because number 10 just gives it that little bit of time to like boost up. Now if I had sound, that sound would have, look, it sound like it was revving up and getting to full power before the train would get going. Where if you have it set to zero in stock, um, you turn it on and the train will be going before the power and everything is uh, sounded there. So um, just a neat little feature, that's something else you can add. Um, basically when you do buy uh, a new, dig uh, well I got the Zephyr and it came with a book, I'm sure other Digitrax controllers would. Um, it comes with this thing called the, um, see that, uh, mobile decoder manual. That's where you can learn all about your CVs and everything and that's what I did by reading that and you, you learn a lot. So uh, let's just bring the train back around here. It takes its time because I'm uh, set to 10 there. Same with there, I'll shut the power off. It's on stop right now, but you can see that it just takes its time. So it's just kind of prototypical and with the sound, it really looks real and it's actually neat. So something to, to work on. Um, other things you can change too. Uh, you can see the light right there on the top. You're able to change the light to do what uh, every, you, what, you know, things that it'll do that you can set it up with. Um, the front light CV49. So I'm gonna just show you something there. So I push program, like I said, we're on the main track, so I gotta go to ops. Um, push CV. I'm gonna put 49 in. Push CV again, and now I'm gonna change it to what I want. So let's say I wanted it to have the Mars light. I just put two in, because that's what the, the range is to putting the uh, light in, write it. And now there's my Mars light. It's pretty neat. Another one there, I go program. Oh, I always exit out after you put a CV and start again. So program, ops, CV, 49 for the front headlight, CV again, choose which one you want. Let's say I wanted to go with the rotary beacon simulation. That's number six. Go there, write it. And now there's your simulation rotary beacon. So, you know, it's different like that, and you can control that from the back too. Like right now, my back, if I put it in reverse, it would just stay on solid, so. Just a whole bunch of different things like that. So, there, there's lots to learn about it. Um, don't, you know, get overwhelmed thinking you're never gonna figure it out, because hey, I was just like you. I was brand new into this just two weeks ago. I didn't know the first thing about DC, and uh, um, doing this and playing with it just for a week, I have learned so much, so I just wanted to, to basically give you the quick highlight of it showing you that you know these things are you're able to do and you're able to fix if you have any questions or anything just uh, let me know and uh, uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can because what I've been taught is is helped me a lot so anyways um, thanks for watching this I hope the CVs are a little more clear now um, again just go through that book it's on page 29 and 30. It tells you all your different CVs there. And that is, by the way, for a Digitrax decoder. Some decoders come with their own CV codes and everything like that. So just, just be aware of that. This is just talking about the DCC uh, Digitrax um, DH123 decoder. So anyways, we'll talk to you soon. Hope it clears it up. And uh, you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.